One of the most common questions we get asked, uh, we get lots of emails on this, in fact, all the time, is what are your personal favorite MAPS programs? We have a lot of workout programs that people follow. There's a ton of them, but we also have our personal favorites. So that's what we're talking about. Who's your episode. favorite kid? Yeah, and I thought I thought it would be wise if, so people who don't know, um, I don't know why they tuned in this episode, but if you don't know, MAPS programs are the workout programs that we create. Um, and each program has kind of a different goal or a different avatar in mind. When we go and create these, we typically think of the person that we're creating this for, and then we write up the program. They're typically about three months long, some a little longer. Um, and I thought we would list our favorite programs by goal, yeah. right? So like top goals, and then what our favorite programs Which are. Which one fits best or suits the best? Generally speaking, yeah. right? Now there's massive individual variances between people, and some things you have to consider yeah. more than others. Like your, your goal may be, fat loss, but you've never worked out before, well, we're probably going to start with the beginner program, you know, regardless of what your goal is. But nonetheless, these are general uh, question, general goals. And so we're going to give our kind of general. Why favorite. don't you start by actually um, telling people how you came about the acronym and how, like, because it's, we haven't talked about the origin. Of Some that. new, new people probably don't yeah, know. Yeah. So it stands for muscular adaptation programming system, which just because workouts or all workouts, all exercise, but strength training in particular, the goal is to get the body to adapt in a particular way. And uh, what I had noticed um, back then, which we talk about all the time, is so many workouts don't seem to take that into consideration. Most workouts or many popular workout programs are just based on getting you sweaty, uh, making you sore, adding some kind of new you know, novel component, some gimmick. And some people will improve their fitness as, an, as a kind of accident, but they're not targeted. They're not specific. Um, they're not well-programmed. So I, I came up with that acronym because I'm like, okay, we're, this is going to be a program that's designed specifically to induce the adaptation that we're looking for. And that's been the way it's been ever since. Yeah, yeah. So first goal, obviously most common goal is fat loss. Uh, yeah. I listed MAPS Anabolic. I love that you put that for fat loss because I think yeah. – the average consumer counterintuitive wouldn't think that um, because it's marketed as a muscle building program. Yep. But most important part of the muscle building program and process or result, I should say, from that or outcome from that is a faster metabolism. Yes. And so, and we've talked on the show many, many times about when I would first get a client, regardless of how overweight they were. I would not put them on a calorie restricted type of diet and just make them. I did early on in my career when I did what I was doing, right? I used to cut their calories, yeah. make them get on the treadmill, keep them moving circuit training. That was kind of the philosophy was the old, let's see if I could, you know, beat the, you know, out outpace the amount of calories they're consuming and get them to lose weight. And initially that would work. And then I'd hit these hard plateaus. It took me years to figure out that I was going about it all the wrong way. Later on, realized, you know, if I had the same client that was overweight like that, I was far better off building their metabolism up, building muscle, and then putting them totally, in a cut yeah. and dieting. And they had took way 10, more success. It took me 10 years to figure that out and a lot of uh, frustration. You know, the other reason why uh, MAPS Anabolic is so great for fat loss is it's the most appropriate volume for being in a calorie deficit. It's not a high volume program. Mm -hmm. uh, we have other programs that are also muscle building that are very high volume that would probably be too much for most people in a calorie deficit. Yeah. Whereas MAPS Anabolic works well with a calorie deficit because the volume, I mean, phase three, the volume gets kicked up a bit, but throughout most of the program, uh, the volume's pretty damn, it's good. It's good. And in a, in a deficit, if you're somewhat fit, it'll work. It'll totally work for you. So it's a great like muscle preserving metabolism boosting or maintaining program while in a deficit, which is necessary for fat loss. I love that. Yeah. Uh, next strength, just pure strength. You know, there, we have a lot of programs I would consider for this, but because those other programs are better in other categories, which we'll get to, I, I, I put per power lift here. I think power mm. lift is just a pure strength, you know, squat bench deadlift program. And yeah. It's, it's the most geared it's, towards it's that. It's the most like directly like metric base. Like if I'm, loading a uh, weight or am I not loading weight? And it gives you that pure progression of um, how to do that specifically. And it's, it, I mean, you're really not focusing uh, quite as much, uh, you know, in terms of like going beyond the big core lifts, which is, you know, this is 
just pure strength. What do you have? Well, what I love about this one, and and I agree here, is that it, these core lifts uh, carry over into all other pursuits. So if your main focus was I want to get strong, well, let's first go get strong in the big core lifts because if you get strong in those, you'll end up being strong in almost any other yeah. lift. And so if I'm building a pathway to somebody uh, considering themselves strong. And by the way, the way we measure that is through these lifts, right? So how, right. how much do you squat? How much do you deadlift? How much do you bench press? Those movements are how people measure how strong they are. So a program that's completely geared and centered around those movements to get you strong in those movements is the ideal pathway for someone to lay that foundational strength. Yeah, and, and it's just it, simplified. It um, is, and you know, all, all of our programs aim to make you stronger but they're but the primary goal of power lift is that's it. Like if you you should be stronger at the end, that's all that matters with this program. So yeah. it's literally a pure strength. How much force can you generate? That's right. You know, and that's really what's uh, you know being measured here. We that's also right. I, this one was uh, written in collaboration with one of our friends, who's an incredible uh, power lifter, right? And so mm -hmm. this was the first time I believe is this the first time that we introduced coaching? Yeah. So that was kind of a cool twist. So as we go through these two, I think we should talk a little bit about when we introduce the program, what it's for. Also, any sort of nuances yeah, that was unique and different. Especially unique yeah, there was some coaching added. on the technique of uh, of how to do the lifts uh -huh. and prepare for them. In contest prep. I mean, it, prep. it could, you know, in a sense, you could prepare yourself for joining a uh, powerlifting comp competition. Well, I remember when we when we first started talking about, I mean, we... we uh, wrote the core three, the original three programs all by ourselves, And then as we started to move into other lanes, um, even though all of us are proficient enough to write a program for damn near any type of a client, we also recognize that we have relationships and friends with people that are even more experienced in those fields. So instead of just saying like, yeah, we could go do this and proving that we could do it by mm -hmm. ourselves. We actually went out and sought after some of the, the most respected people in that space uh, and our good friend Ben Polk is one of those people who is just an incredible power lifter, a very intelligent power lifter. And so uh, collaborating with him, we always thought, well, okay, this is even better. It's like, I'd love to hear his feedback. And he did, just like everybody that we collaborated with, even though we created the program, having them as a second pair of eyes to actually oversee it or look at or add their two cents, I think was super valuable. And he was one of the first, I don't know if you think- He was one of the first, we had Robert Oberst for Strong, and then we had Amelia for OCR. OCR. No, and we also it. had Dr. Brink Dr. with- Dr. Brink for oh, Prime Pro. Yeah, Brink yeah. was first. So yeah, so I think Brink, our, so Brink was the first collab, and then yes. I think Pollock was maybe the second collab. That's right. But, so. um, cool. That's right. Next, uh, conditioning. So conditioning uh, refers to uh, essentially athletic performance, right? A combination of strength, stamina, some endurance, stability, uh, also the ability to exert even. this strength and power in different directions. You know, conditioning would refer to the kind of strength that you would uh, that would apply to uh, athletic pursuits. Mm -hmm. That was an easy one for me to pick. Mass performance. It's the it's by far the most geared towards conditioning and performance in general. Yeah. Now we have other programs that will give you some good conditioning. Cardio is good. OCR will give you some of that. But performance is so well balanced. Like I don't care what sport you play, it's gonna it's gonna get you more conditioned and fit. It was my sport. favorite way to present cardio. Yeah, uh, because it it reminded me of the off season training for an athlete, um, and doing this in blocks and focusing on uh, max strength and moving in different directions, which is vital for athletes to be strong in multiple directions and and be capable of exuding power from different positions. Uh, and then really testing that and testing the durability of, um, you know, being able to do these movements uh, for a little bit longer time lengths and, and be able to stay conditioned. Again, for the audience to shed light on the origin of this program, this was one, this was one of the first, this is actually the first program we all wrote together. Mm -hmm. And it was in response to uh, the way we came out talking about CrossFit. So early on when the show first started, uh, we, we critiqued, a lot of the programming uh, of the CrossFit gyms and just the way they were ran. And one of the pushbacks that we got from our audience was, okay, um, we respect you guys as trainers. We know you've been doing this for a long time, but what if I like to train this way 
Um, I like those lifts. I like these things. I like the conditioning that yeah. I get, uh, the athleticism that I feel from training like CrossFit. If you guys say it's so bad, but I want all those things, how would you guys Give me write a version? Yeah. Yeah. How would you guys write that program? And this was our answer or response to that community of people that love the attributes that come from CrossFit, because obviously it can create these incredible athletes and specimens that can do all kinds of cool feats. But we believe that there's a better way to approach that. And that's what mass performance was really about. So if you are very performance, athletic driven, you like CrossFit style of training as far as the types of movements and the attributes you get from it. To me, this is a better way Great. to do that. Hey, this episode is brought to you by LMNT. This is electrolyte powder with enough sodium to really make a difference. No artificial sweeteners, no uh, crappy colors. Go check them out. Click on this link right here. Great explanation. Uh, next is bodybuilding. Like, what is the best bodybuilding program? Now, we have several programs that would qualify for bodybuilding, but uh, I chose MAPS Aesthetic because... Really, the the foundation and crux uh, of bodybuilding, right? The 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 root of bodybuilding is to develop, of course, building the body, but it's also to build the body in a very balanced way. Like, if you have the biggest shoulders, but you go on stage and it doesn't match the rest of your body, you're going to get judged uh, harshly. Bodybuilding is about the whole package. Symmetry. It's about developing this really symmetrical aesthetic physique that has balance, and Maps Aesthetic has that baked in there. So Maps Aesthetic is a of course, is to build muscle, right? But what it does is it has what are called focus sessions, which allow the user to add volume to weaker body parts, to bring those weaker body parts up to develop or present a more balanced physique. It's really the only program that does that. Other programs are, otherwise, uh, we programmed everything in there with, with aesthetic. What's left in there for you to do mm -hmm. is what areas do I want to place special yeah, focus on? A little on? more emphasis there. That's right. And you can look at your body like a sculptor and sculpted it accordingly. Now, the reason why this one wasn't the where maps anabolic is the higher volume program. This is a high level bodybuilding style workout program, but it definitely does what it says. I mean, this is uh, my favorite, obviously, um, inspired by my journey into competing. I remember we had just created performance, all of us together. It was time for a new program. I was right in the thick of bodybuilding. And I remember communicating this with the guys uh, off air a lot, which is, the way that this would happen is I would go to a show and just like Sal said, I would present my physique and then I would meet with the judges afterwards and I'd say, hey, you know, where can I be better? And mm -hmm. they say things like, ah, oh, you know, your shoulders are really developed, but your chest could come up to match it more. Or you got a, a, a great low back, but you need to develop your quads more. Or they would give me parts of my body that wasn't as symmetrical. And then what I would have to do is go, okay. I'm now I'm back to the drawing board. I'm getting ready to train for the next show coming up. I'm going to take what I heard for feedback on how it. And so I would intentionally build volume into the program based off of the feedback that I got. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling the guys like, man, this would be a cool program to write for the audience. Cause how often do you hear this from a client where they come to you? And I know these guys would say the same thing. Like almost every client, when I would assess them at the very beginning, would tell me things like, oh, I want to yeah. I want to build my shoulders more. I want to yeah. build my butt more. I want to build my, le like everybody has a body part that they wish was more developed than something else on their body. And how would you go about program programming that? And the, the recipe for most people is just, oh, do more of it. Yeah. But there is a delicate dance of how to scale volume properly so you don't actually go back the opposite or go back the opposite direction. And so this was uh, our way of being able to create a program, first one, two, that was customizable yep. that people could look at and go, hey, I personally want this and this muscle group. And then you just plug and play and you should be able to see a difference in those muscle groups at the end of that program, which that was really cool. I thought that was a lot it, of fun. It, again, like traditional bodybuilding, that's the idea. So it's the closest to that. I mean, it is a bodybuilding. That's what we designed it. Yep. Next, uh, I put down unconventional mass. What do, I, what do I mean by that? Building muscle, a lot of muscle, but in, in kind of an unconventional way. Um, this is map strong, hands down. This is this program for me was surprisingly in, effective at just building muscle. But a lot of the movements in there are not traditional bodybuilding movements. A lot of the even the traditional bodybuilding movements aren't done in traditional ways. And this was the first time I had followed uh, one of our non-conventional kind of programs. 
And I remember just getting blown away at like the back development that I got from it. Yeah. Just the overall strength and stability. My core got so solid yeah. from this program. And I just, my forearms. I muscle just, endurance just, too from the, it, yeah. It was, this Work was sessions. one of my favorites and it continues to be one of the, our favorite programs that people were right in on. They'll often say like, oh, this is one of my favorite ones. Yeah, I, when I think of why this instead of powerlifting, it's a different type of strength. Like I think of this as like someone who wants like real world strength. Someone's yeah. like, I want to be able to throw a bale of hay. I want to be able to pick somebody up Hug on my shoulder. something really heavy and awkward and yeah, be able to move I, it. There's, there's movements in there that are so unique. Like powerlifting was very cut and dry. It was like, okay, these are the specific movements for powerlifting you got to get good at. Where strong was it's like more- like you got to do a strongman yeah. competition, which yes. involves a little bit of running and throwing and lifting and carrying and flipping cars and just weird yeah. stuff. You have to be like, a, be like a diesel truck. Yeah, dude. So are you arguably, may, and maybe by this time, I'm trying to think of the order of all of our programs that we had written, one of the most unique. I mean, everything from we came out the gates in a very uh, unconventional way of high reps, right? Mm -hmm. We had movements like zer uh, zerchers in there. We had circus presses in mm -hmm. there. We had, I think windmills are in that program yeah. too. We had carries that were included in that. A lot of unique things were put into that program that translate to real world strength. And so if you're somebody who's like, I'm into strength, power lift is like, yeah. power lift to me is like get strong at the big core lifts. Just get strong in general is what strong is to me. That's totally, what I think and it actually became one of the most popular program among our for women. Female. Yes, because yes, the posterior change because of the butt and the back, back development. Yeah, development oh. is yeah. insane. Oh, it's amazing. All right, next, uh, I put a category for fun. So, and this is <laughs> yeah. for people who you like working out. You yeah. love working. You like it so much. You want a unique challenge. You want to go to the gym. You want to do different kinds of strength training. Maybe you've been working out for a while, or maybe not. Maybe you just you, like you think I, you know it all. Yeah, and maybe. I just want to try yeah. different things. By the way, uh, that's a great value to have and find in your yes. workouts because that'll that's the rest of your life. You plan on working out for the rest of your life. You want to find it enjoyable. Um, and I put uh, Maps Old Time here. Yeah, it's the it is the is most different program yeah. that we, that we have now. The side effect of, of of Maps Old Time is incredible core development, shoulder development, grip development, and just people come back and say, "My deadlift went up thirty pounds," even though. We're not doing conventional deadlifts in this, or my overhead press went up. Dude, you know, T spine pounds. stability. Like, I mean, it, just doing any kind of uh, movement that normally you might twist or rotate a little way, and, and your body's going to overreact or you're going to be unstable in it. Yes. Like, this makes you solid. It, it like solidifies all the gaps it, in your training. It was based off of the 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 bronze era of bodybuilding. These are bodybuilders that trained. At the you know at the turn of the century, late 1800s, early 1900s, and they didn't have I mean supplements. They didn't even take supplements, let alone anabolic steroids. In many cases, they didn't even have a, they didn't have a squat rack that didn't exist yeah. uh, in those days, or they didn't have a bench. Uh, and yet they developed these imp not just impressive physiques. Just to give you an example: uh, a one arm bent press. Now this is a one arm press overhead. Okay, so you're holding something overhead. The record at the time was over 300 pounds. That's crazy. These were men that weighed 190 pounds, mm -hmm. and their bodies were, I mean, if you look at pictures of them, they look like they're carved out of, out of marble, yeah. but so incredibly strong. How did they work out? What did they do? What were the principles that they followed? That was MAPS whole time. Was this a, a year or two years ago? Oh, probably good two question. years. Was I it two years? almost two years? Almost now. two years ago when we wrote yeah. that. It's interesting because I just uh, Sal. I don't know if Sal shared with you guys. He shared with me. I think it was. I think Athlean X has come out with a program that's like similar, right? Uh, it's like a very similar, like old timey, older bronze era type of. Body. I think he, his was more. I think his was golden era seventies. Oh, older. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, like, I, I feel like that's becoming yeah, we like older. I feel <laughs> like even, even before, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I just feel like that's a, that's becoming a trend now. It was something that we did a couple of years ago that I thought was really interesting. And yeah. to your point about like, I love that you made a category for fun and I love that you use this program because the longer you've been doing this, the more you realize the power and value of novelty training. Totally. When you first start, uh, you can almost do anything so long as you perform it with good form and technique and see benefits from it. The longer you've been training, the harder it is to squeeze out that next 10% or yep. 10 pounds on a oh, lift. Yeah. 
and you you realize like how unique you have to go because your body gets so adapted to these regular movements that we always do and most good programs have a lot of the same regular movements and so you've reaped a lot of those benefits if you've been training for 5 10 15 years right. as you go beyond that you start to realize like man the the value of hacking into something that's so novel and different than what I would normally go and pursue that there's huge newbie benefits newbie gains are, are huge, back that's right it's like you get those newbie gains because you're doing a movement you've never trained before. And to me, that's fun. That's fun. That's exciting. If you're somebody who gravitates to this naturally, this is a huge strength uh, to lean into. And by strength, I mean, it's going to serve you in the pursuit of health and fitness for a long time. And so I love this as a category and I love this as a program there because it's one of those ones that, you know, there's definitely a, a percentage of people that just gravitate to some unique stuff like this, but most people don't make this a practice and they should make this a practice totally. to reap yeah. all the benefits. Totally. All right. Next category, women. What is the best program for women? Now, of course, generally speaking, they would do great any following yeah. any of our programs and depending on the woman's goal, that will change what kind of program uh, they do. But we've been asked so long for so long, please create a workout for women. Please create a workout for women. So we did. It's MAPS Muscle Mommy. Now, the, what makes this a, a program for women? Really, it has a lot to do. Besides, there are in there some recommendations for certain supplements that benefit women more than men, for example, and certain lifestyle changes that may benefit women more than men. The workout itself, we changed the programming a bit, not because women need to train differently, but because women tend to prioritize different parts of their body. They tend to want more shoulders than chest, more glutes than quads. They tend to want to shape and mold their body differently than men do, or at least they're interested. So the programming reflects this. The program room reflects the body part areas that women like to focus on and want to develop more than men. And that's what we created with Maps Muscle, Muscle I Mommy. believe this is still, is this the biggest launch we ever had? I think that was the biggest program. By right? far. Which is most popular program. Very interesting to me, uh, to the point you made that like it's not like uh, exercises for women are so unique and different, but because we tailored it, there was nutritional advice in there that was related to women. There was supplement yep. advice that's related to women. There were specific exercises that we put in there that was related to women. But, for the, but to completely uh, alienate a category, right? No, like from men, yeah. Yeah. and to have no, the biggest program our audience with that launch one. we've ever had was really interesting to watch. And this one is for sure uh, a fan favorite. I mean, I think this program is one of those ones that I feel like almost every woman that listens to the podcast, I think, owns this program or knows <laughs> yeah, someone who owns almost. this program. So this is a great one. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Do you want to improve your squat without injuries? Do you want to have a stronger squat? Do you want to have a deeper squat? We have a free how to squat like a pro guide. It's totally free. And you can get it right now in it. We describe details, exercises, techniques, and ways you can improve your squat so that you start to squat like a pro. You can get it for free right now if you click on the link in the description below. Next up, uh, beginners. You're, you're a complete beginner to strength training. You want to get started. You want, you've want you heard us talk about on the show or you've read the benefits of strength training. It builds muscle, improves insulin sensitivity, improves longevity and function. Of course, it looks good. All right, where do I get started? Map Starter. That is uh, the the best, absolute best, well programmed program that we have for beginners, and it's how trainers should train beginners. So there are stability components in there. It is traditional strength training. You will build muscle. Mm -hmm. You will get stronger. But it's written in a way that considers that we are getting you from n never strength training. Stability is the focus. Yes, to developing okay. the ability to move into some of our other programs. This is how we train clients when they first got started. And that's what you're going to find in there. There's going to be movements that are a lot of movements on a physio ball to yeah. help you with your technique and form. And the exercises that we chose were the ones that benefit beginners the most. Well, this is actually, and we, we kind of joke about how it got so crazy with the functional movement back in the yeah. day with single leg this and, you know, balancing that. But, uh, you know, there's just enough of challenge in terms of us introducing stability ball, us introducing uh, unilateral training in there as well. Uh, to be able to challenge that stability because we need that rock solid foundation to, to work off of to then load substantially. And so this kind of introduces all these ways to now increase your strength stability around the joints. Well, I remember when we, we wrote this, uh, it was filling a gap and a need. Um, totally. We always, we always think of like MAPS Anabolic as our foundational program for foundational strength, building metabolism. It's like the core program that everybody 
should go through it, regardless of your pursuit, right? It really lays the ultimate foundation. But the reality is we knew there was a large percentage of the population that aren't even ready for that yet, right? That, that, that can't quite squat yet, that can't quite do some of these movements. And we trained a lot of those people. And so it was like, okay, well, what do we do for the people that we need to get up to MAPS Anabolic? And MAPS Anabolic is the goal, but they're starting and, they're, mm -hmm. and they have to regress for, what does that regression look like? And that really was Map Starter. Map Starter was designed to feel, fill that gap that we had with the, someone who's really deconditioned, someone who's never trained. I mean, how many times did you have clients when your first session was like having them balance on one leg because yeah. you couldn't? So, because you had a regress thing. I mean, you're not bilateral back lo loading and squatting that person yet. They're not ready for it. And so it really was designed for that. So if you have somebody who is either a family or a loved one that's very deconditioned or never trained before, Map Starter is absolutely the place that you start them at because that's going to prepare them also, for like Maps Anabolic. Yeah, one we definitely recommend for post pregnancies. So. Post partum. It's the best program yeah. for it. once you're cleared. Starters are great postpartum program, and it's also good for the elderly. Uh, so if you have a you know, mom or dad or grandparent uh, who wants to get started with strength training, like starter is the place uh, to go. Next up, this is my favorite category, uh, <laughs> moms and dads. And the reason why there's a category for moms and dads, because there's a lot of moms and dads out there that would fit in all the other categories. But what I'm thinking of are new moms and dads. Mm -hmm. you, you're busy. You got busy. You no got sleep. a newborn or a one-year-old or a two-year-old. I'm a, We're all dads. Mm -hmm. We know that that's, that season of life, which, you know, it lasts for a little while, for at least a few years. You are busy and it is uh, it is very demanding and you don't necessarily have the time to go leave for an hour and a half or two hours to go work out uh, at the gym because uh, your family is a priority. But because your family is also a priority, you want to maintain your health. Uh, you, a healthy mom or dad is a better mom or dad. So how do I strength train with those uh, commitments? And, and, and I also don't want to sacrifice results. That's MAPS 15. It literally requires 15 to 20 minutes a day. It's a phenomenal strength training program with the surprise of actually being one of the most effective muscle building programs we have for, yeah. for many people. Many people do this not realizing they'll get some of their best gains, and it's because of the low volume that a lot of people need with strength training to get those gains. I mean, this uh, this has become one of my favorite programs. Yeah. Would have never guessed this. Same. Nope. Would have never guessed uh, ironically also experienced it, uh, during the birth of my son. So that was right around the time that we wrote this program. And so it just made sense. I would go through it when I was limited on time anyways, was super surprised by the response that my body had and how well I actually built on it. I thought it was really interesting and then have now fallen in love with that program. I do want to add to this though. Like, so this of all the lists I was looking at that, I was like, oh, I wonder where Sal's going with moms and dads on this. And I get it with the time because that makes a lot of sense. Like when you're limited on time, you're not getting a lot of rest. You yeah. want to be lower Low on volume, volume, lower on intensity. Yeah. This is just, this is like not the time you're doing maps aesthetic. It'll be a horrible yeah. idea for moms and dads who aren't sleeping well. But I also think there is a program that fits this category really well too, as you, and maybe what that looks like is as the sleep starts to come back, and you actually got good rhythm and you're feeling good. And that's our MAPS 40, over oh, 40. Yeah, yeah. And that really, I think the, the lifestyle stuff that we included that for uh, people, I think moms and dads uh, would benefit off that. And I guess the way I would decide if you're listening and you're a mom and dad of a you know newly born or toddler is, are you at the stage with your toddler of or kid of getting good rest, able to eat, have a little time for yourself, actually can go to the gym and work out for say an hour at a time like this maps 40 makes a, a lot mm -hmm. of sense for these people. Um, if you're at the early stages where it's just like, I'm fighting to get a night's of sleep, yeah. MAPS 15 is yeah. probably the program MAPS for 40 you. plus, obviously the best for middle-aged uh, individuals who want to build muscle. Right. right? Um, all right. Last up is for travel. Now we have several programs that are great for travel, um, that that are use minimal or no equipment, but we had to pick one. I picked MAP suspension. Now the reason why I picked suspension is suspension trainers are appropriate for beginners but they're also appropriate for very advanced. Yes. It's very hard to find, you know, travel equipment like bands that are going to benefit the super advanced. Like you could have a beginner use bands, they'll get a great workout. If you're really strong and you're traveling, how do I work out? And I have access to gym. I'm traveling. Here's some resistance bands. Oh, great. I'm going to do 5,000 reps for each exercise. <laughs> yeah. A suspension trainer, you'll get a workout because yeah. you could change the angle and make it really, 
really hard. So that's why I picked that. I think. I mean, that's a, to me a no brainer. We have we have maps anywhere. We have maps bands, Seamless. which also are great for travel. Mm -hmm. But suspension, you can make that really difficult and oh, yeah. make a. I mean, there's been times where that's all I worked out on was a suspension trainer, yep. and I'm in, and like I'm not like traveling or anything like that. It's just because it's a good ass workout by itself. Um, I like that, and I can challenge it, and I like that I can take someone who's really deconditioned and doesn't have that, and all, and I with a suspension trainer, I can regress it by how we position their feet away from the wall or closer to the wall, uh, changes the intensity of the exercise. So very regressible, easily can be progressed for advanced people. And it just requires a suspension trainer, yeah, and you can tie it to a tree. Yeah, you can tie it to a tree, a door jam. I mean, it's like getting it uh traveling with it super small and easy like that's a to me i i would agree that this is one of the best travel programs hey real quick black friday is here 60 percent off all maps program bundles 60 percent off all individual maps programs also you'll get triple entries to win a five-day vacation at the mind pump park city house click on this link go check it out got some questions the first one is uh if I'm a personal trainer, what program should I own? Oh, God. Well, definitely Prime and Prime Pro. That's if a must. You, you have to. Both are correctional exercise-based. Prime allows you to assess your clients. Yeah. Um, like, if you don't have those and you're a trainer that listens to the show, like, you're dumb. MAPS Prime should be the program that you do every client their first day should be yeah. MAPS so your Prime. your assessment right is, there. Is your assessment. So you should do that with them. Prime Pro should be in your back pocket because what's inevitable, if you've been training longer than a day, you're going to run into a client who has chronic pain. And your ability to be able to troubleshoot that and help alleviate pain is paramount to your success as a trainer. That's what MAPS Prime Pro is, is it helps you go through all the major joints and test their ability to connect and go through full range of motion. And if they fail, it gives you correctional exercises mm -hmm. to help them with that. And that is a must have. I would totally. add to that yeah. symmetry. symmetry. Yeah. yeah, because uh, uh, unilateral programming doesn't exist no so this will give them an idea it's so necessary to to strengthen around the joints and get everything back on track next question is what do you guys think of high intensity interval program you know high hit training right hit yeah. is uh, the acronym high intensity interval training the problem with it is it's almost never almost never well programmed it's yeah. basically this is what this is what it looks like when you it's fall. random it's a bunch of exercises done in a circuit and they call it hit so they go go one two three four in a row here's your hit training now hit by the way that style of training has been shown to burn more body fat in a shorter period of time and it's great for conditioning now i will say this it doesn't work forever you plateau pretty quickly but in a couple a month period window. yeah in a couple month period it's a great fat burning fat loss style of workout, but it needs to be programmed well because it does matter what exercise you do in what order. So we created MAPS HIT. MAPS HIT is programmed properly. So you're not just throwing exercises. When you throw exercises together, just get a treadmill and do HIT. And it's one, the same thing. One thing I notice about a lot of HIT programs out there is they don't put any emphasis on what to do in between in terms of mobility movements yeah. and to really reinforce the joints because you're putting a lot of excess stress when you're going high intensity like that. And to be able to kind of counter that and have emphasis there is something that we made sure to program. Two things I remember about creating this program. One, it was actually one of the, the original viral sales that we ever did. Yep. So before Muscle Mommy and some of the other ones that went crazy, this one went crazy because of the popularity. Two, this is also the first program, I think the only program that we have a warning. Yes. On, <laughs> we did. Not yes. to repeat it, not to do That's it for right. much longer than this. And so People that was like one of, so it was like one of those things where it's like, listen, we can write this and create this because it is a tool. It is valuable in the right context and at the right amount of time. And I think what most people do is they don't include the things that Justin was talking about, Sal was talking about, and then they also abuse it and overuse it versus learning how to use it for what it's great for, then move out of it. And because of all this, uh, of course, it's Black Friday. We're going through Black Friday right now. Everything's 60% off. So every one of these programs and all the other programs and bundles, 60% off. And then here's what we're doing. Because of this episode, we are going to give away triple the amount of entries to win a free vacation. What? So typically, it's 10 entries per bundle purchase or five entries per program purchase. But if you get right now during the airing of this episode, you'll get 30 for bundle purchases and 15 for program Dang. purchases. This is going on until December 1st, Doug says. So this this giveaway, this extra triple you know, entries is December 1st. Let's go. Now triple you, crown. Now you can get all of this, the 60% off plus the entries at mapsfitnessproducts.com, but you have to use the code 
Black Friday. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher. Body